Hello, viewers. I froze my Koji for six months. Will it brew? So I made Koji, also called Ipguk, in this video. And I brewed with half of it. I've made Doboroku. And I put the other half in the freezer. And I almost forgot about it until today. In this video, you'll see what happens to my frozen koji. If you like this video, please click that like button and subscribe. Click the bell to be notified of my new videos. I have a new video on the subject of rustic Asian rice wine every Thursday. And please share this video wherever it is appropriate. I really appreciate you spreading the word about rustic Asian rice wine. And I can tell there's a lot of room for growth in subscribers. About 80% of the viewing time is by non-subscribers. So, uh, so please subscribe. It really helps the channel out and helps promote the channel. Thank you. So let's brew. I'm going to go through this quickly because I've shown you a recipe like this in a previous video. So I thought the koji in the fridge, I moved it from the freezer to the fridge, and uh, then I let it come to room temperature on the counter. And it has a very strong, cheesy aroma. So that makes me wonder how this is going to turn out. So it's been in the freezer for six months, and I just thought it out to room temperature on the counter. And uh, now I'm going to take uh, my sweet rice, 600 grams of sweet rice, chopped salt, wash and rinse repeatedly for 15 minutes, soak it for at least three hours, rinse it again, let it drain for 30 minutes, steam it for 40 minutes, take it out of the steamer and uh, spread it out to cool to room temperature. In the meantime, mix some warm water and a quarter teaspoon of bread yeast. So this is the Godubop, the hard steamed rice from 600 grams of chopped saw. And I add 850 milliliters of water and the yeast mixture and the koji, 271 grams. I add that as well. Mix everything by hand. Keep the lid loose. Ferment it in a dark place around 20 degrees Celsius. Now let's watch it ferment. It's day one and bubbles are formed. Uh, it's a little dry on the top. But I'm going to mix mix it once a day for the first few days. So it's still pretty solid. Um, the next day, it's already separated into a liquid layer on the bottom and a more solid layer on top. It is bubbling rapidly. There are a lot of small bubbles if, when I listen to it closely. And uh, day three, same thing. It's separated. Um, it's getting very soft. Lots of rapid bubbles, and I stir it again. And day four, some of the rice is falling down to the bottom. It's getting more uniform. It's more wet on top. When I check it with a match test, the match goes out. This is really bubbling a lot. This is like my the previous time I brewed with this koji. Match continues to go out. Day six, looking more uniform. Still bubbling. Match goes out. Day seven, looking more uniform. Uh, a little, um, some kind of film on top. So I'm going to stir just to get rid of any growth on top. That's unusual. I'm going to stir that in. Hopefully that'll settle things down. Now it looks completely uniform from top to bottom. Um, there's no longer a film on top. Match still goes out. Day nine. Looks wet on top. Match goes out. Day 10. It's still bubbling a lot, so I'm not ready to stop yet. And the, the match is still going out. So I can tell the rice has really broken down. So this is this has fermented perfectly normally. 
So there's been no problems with using the, the frozen koji so far. Lower the match into the jar. This time it doesn't go out. Okay, but it's still bubbling. So I, I let it continue to the next day, day 12. And, uh, and the match still doesn't go out. It's almost going out, but um, so there is less bubbling than before. So I am going to filter today. Is it going to be normal? Well, my filter bag, dump the whole jar into the filter bag. Passes through easily. Yeah, the rice was really broken down and, and poured into the into the filter bag easily. I just have to squeeze the filter bag carefully with clean hands. It's easy to squeeze the, the liquid out. I'm left with the solids. Not, uh, not too much, it's 247 grams. It's very soft and fragrant leftovers. So let's put it in the bottles. I end up with uh, a bit more than one and a half liters. And uh, what's the flavor of this freshly bottled brew? Well, it's it's tart it, and sweet, and it has a citric aftertaste. The texture is nice and smooth. Um, so, but I'm going to wait a bit before giving my final judgment. But from all appearances, using using the frozen koji has worked perfectly fine. So nine days later, I'm going to taste my Doburoku, my rustic rice wine. I'm going to need to uh, shake this up and mix it together. There's been plenty of, uh, there's plenty of gas built up. It's going to overflow if I don't open it carefully. Right, so I'm going to have to alternate between uh, shaking it and letting the gas out, shaking it some more, letting the gas out. So it's it carbonated itself very well. Okay, after about five minutes, uh, I can pour it into the cup, and uh, but I think it will overflow if I don't close it up again. All right, so now the now the taste now it is it's less sweet than before, and the tartness is really is really powerful. It's it's a clean grapefruit tartness, um, quite striking, and it, the texture is still great and nice and smooth. Um, yeah, so this has a clean, strong taste, very nice. You can freeze your koji and use it after six months. So I think that's a good thing to know. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching.